Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and in this video, we'll be going through everything you need to know about the Experimental Design FRQ on the 2021 APES exam. If you're ready to think like a mountain and write like a scholar, let's get to it. First, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, turn on notifications so you don't miss videos number two and three in this series. Then, make sure to check out the link tree in the description below for tons more great APES exam review content. Before we dive into the Experimental Design FRQ today, we need to cover some of the basics of FRQs on the 2021 exam. In previous years, there were four FRQs that you had to write in 90 minutes. Last year, there were only two FRQs, and one was 25 minutes, one was 15 minutes. So I can understand how you might be a little bit confused about the 2021 exam. Well, fingers crossed, you will be writing three FRQs, and you will have 70 minutes to do that. So we're going to go forward with a game plan to help you break down those three FRQs. The first thing to remember when you're writing these FRQs is that time will fly. You have 70 minutes to write three FRQs, so that's about 23 minutes per FRQ. Now each FRQ will have 10 points, but as we'll talk about later in this video, not all of those points are equally difficult to earn. This breaks down to about two minutes per point, and so it's important that you really move through at a decent pace. If you haven't already watched the Write Like a Scholar series, there are three videos in this playlist. You wanna make sure to check those out before you go further with this video. A lot of the things I cover in this video will operate under the assumption that you are a well-oiled FRQ writing machine. And if you're not quite yet, that's okay. You have time to get there, but you definitely wanna check out the Write Like a Scholar series first. The other thing that you need to remember before we get into writing the experimental design FRQ is that you do not need to be perfect when you're writing these FRQs. Each FRQ will be out of 10 points, and if you want to score a 5 in the exam, you need to average between 7 and 8 points across these three FRQs. If you want to earn a 4, you need to average between a 6 and a 7, and if you want to earn a 3, you need to average between a 5 and a 6. So you can earn a 5 even if you skip one or two questions per FRQ, so long as you're getting most of the others correct. Now what we'll talk about in this video is which points are the easier points that you want to focus on and ensure you're earning, and which points to skip if you're running low on time or if you're not feeling as confident on those points. So the first thing you need to know about the Experimental Design FRQ is that roughly half of the 10 points on this FRQ will be based on a described experiment. Now I actually recommend going right to the Experimental Design questions even if they're not the first listed, because I think they're some of the easier points on the FRQ, and you would not want to run out of time when you have an identify a control group uh, hanging out down there at the bottom of that FRQ. That is an easy point. That's what I call low-hanging fruit, and you want to make sure you get that. Pick that fruit off the tree, put it in your FRQ point basket, and move on with some confidence. So what we'll do as we go through this experimental design FRQ is focus on the tips and tricks to make sure you're earning those easy points and building yourself a nice, solid foundation. Now, you may be asking yourself, what about those other five points? What are those based on? They'll typically be based on a similar concept. So if we're talking about acid deposition and how it affects lima bead seeds, uh, we may be looking at more general effects, like how does acid deposition you know, even form? Or what are some ways that we can mitigate acid deposition? So be prepared to answer questions that are based on a data set or a graph or a map that are not necessarily explicitly about the experiment, but that cover the same general topic. The second thing you need to know about the experimental design FRQ is that the variables will be directly named in the description, but you have to look for them. So as you're reading this experimental design description, it's really important to watch for those variables. Remember that the independent variable is the variable that I, the scientist, manipulate. Another way to think of it is what's the investigation focused on. So you're changing some sort of variable and then you're looking at the dependent variable, which will be the data or the outcome. What happens as a result of manipulating the independent variable? If you're still struggling with how to identify independent and dependent variable, make sure to check out my exam 2020 review video as I spent a lot of time on variables and controls in that video. Regardless of how comfortable you feel with variables, there's something that you need to do on the experimental design FRQ when it comes to identifying variables, and that's be very precise. So a lot of students see identify and they think, sweet, I can get away with just giving a one word answer here. But not you, you're watching this video, so you are going to write like a scholar. You're gonna use the exact terms that the experiment has been described in. So if the FRQ is asking you to identify the dependent variable in a study where you're collecting particulate matter on a white piece of cloth, uh, from the tailpipes of a bunch of different vehicles, you're not going to say that the dependent variable is particulates or PM or pollution or smoke. 
you're going to say it's the amount of particulate matter collected on the white fabric. Just use the exact language that's in the description and you'll guarantee that you earn this point as long as you're not mixing up dependent and independent variables. Another thing you need to be prepared to do on this experimental design FRQ is to identify a scientific question that's being explored or to identify a testable hypothesis or claim. Now it's really important that if you're asked to identify a question, your answer has a question mark at the end. That might seem pretty obvious, but you need to do this. The scoring rubric is going to expect that you have this in the form of a question. Now, a good way to phrase this question is, what is the effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable? So an example here would be, how will the pH of rainwater affect the germination rate of lima bean seeds? Notice we're using the independent variable pH and the dependent variable lima bean seed germination rate. If you're asked to identify a hypothesis, use this really simple template. Increasing or decreasing the IV will increase or decrease the DV. So we could say that decreasing the pH of rainwater will lead to a decrease in the germination rate of these seeds. So we wanna be really specific and use the exact independent variable, the exact dependent variable that we identified earlier on in the experimental design. A common mistake I see students make when it comes to identifying a scientific question or identifying a hypothesis is using a dependent variable that's not actually measurable. So oftentimes students will say, decreasing the pH of rainwater will make the lima bean seed unhealthy. It will make it die. Now that's a little bit closer to being measurable. We can measure mortality, but you wanna be precise and just use the dependent variable that's already generated in the prompt for you. And you definitely don't wanna say something vague like it will make the lima beans unhealthy. Another thing you may be asked to identify with regard to an experiment would be a control group. Remember that a control group serves as a comparison or a baseline. So a great example here would be using distilled water, which has a pH of seven, to just serve as a control for these other acidic water treatments that you're putting with your lima bean seeds. Another prompt you may get hit with on this experimental design FRQ is identifying constants or controls. Now you wanna be really careful here because if they're asking for a control group, they'll use the word group, but they may just use the word control and what they really mean by that is constants. So this would be things such as keeping the volume of water that's given to each treatment the same, watering each of these seed groups with the same frequency and keeping the same number of seeds in each treatment or in each group. Now, one of the trickiest types of questions you may be asked with this experimental design FRQ is designing the experiment itself. You may be asked to give a procedure to test a given hypothesis. The key here is to keep it short. You do not need five or six sentences. You don't need step after step. You need to just clearly lay out at least three groups, usually a control and two experimental, clearly state your independent and dependent variable, and then give some indication as to how data will be gathered. If you do those things, you should do enough to earn this one point. The biggest thing I wanna reiterate here is to not write this out as if this is an entire experiment. It's going to be worth one point at the max. You don't wanna write this whole paragraph and spend all of your time designing an experiment. Keep it short, identify your groups, your variables, and specify how you'll collect data for the dependent variable. Another thing to be aware of is that nestled within these experimental design questions, even within the same sub question, you may be asked a conceptual question all of a sudden. So you might be asked to explain what the effects of acidic water might be on plants. So this would be involving, you know, a concept such as macronutrients and H plus ions in the soil. So you might say something like a low pH in your rainwater is going to lead to H plus ions accumulating in the soil you know, leaching out positively charged macronutrients like calcium or potassium. The thing you don't wanna do here is get totally stuck and get derailed. It's going to be within the same context of the experiment you're already talking about. But if you look at it and you think, I don't know this content, skip past it because oftentimes there's one more experimental design question beneath it. And so you don't wanna get hung up and get out of your groove. If you have to skip one or two questions on an FRQ, this explain the scientific concept behind the lab or behind the investigation is probably one of the first points that I would skip. And finally, you need to be prepared for the trickiest part of the experimental design FRQ, which will ask you to either propose a modification that will alter the results of the study or to predict how a given modification will alter the results of the study or the experiment. The key here is not to panic. Keep your dependent variable the same. So we're still talking about lima bean germination rate here. Uh, we're not starting over from scratch. 
what we are probably doing is picking a new independent variable. So rather than looking at water that has different pHs, maybe we're gonna look at water that has different concentrations of a given pollutant, like aluminum. Or maybe we're going to look at the effects of crushing up limestone and adding that limestone to some of these treatments to see if that can buffer the acid deposition that we're simulating. So don't panic, don't start over, just pick a different independent variable and that is likely going to be an acceptable change that would modify the results. So now that we've learned how to think like scientists on this experimental design FRQ, let's put our knowledge to the test. If you go down in the video description below, you will find a full length practice FRQ from the 2020 exam period and that will cover experimental design. You'll also find linked in that document an exam review video produced by Scott Sowell, who is a veteran APES teacher, and he's going to go through with you exactly how to score that FRQ so that you can write it and self-score. I recommend putting on a 23-minute timer so you get used to that exam pacing, and then I recommend watching that video because Scott does an awesome job of breaking down exactly how many points you would earn for given answers. If you have any other questions about the 2020 exam, FRQs, or anything APES related, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications if you haven't already. You don't wanna miss videos number two and three in this series. And as always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.